QuickBooks Desktop 2023, Banking Section, Company Section, and Shortcuts. Let's do it with Intuit's QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in QuickBooks Desktop Sample Rock Castle Construction Practice File provided by QuickBooks. Going through the setup process we do every time, maximizing the homepage to the gray area. Going to the View dropdown and the Open Windows list on the left hand side. Going to the Reports up top, Company and Financial. Looking at the P&L Profit and Loss Income Statement, changing the range from 010124 to 123124. And then I'm going to customize it so I can go to the fonts and numbers and change the font to 12. Okay. Yes, please. Okay. Same process with the reports, company and financial, but this time the balance sheet standard, the other big financial statement, 123124, the date and customization of it with the fonts and numbers, changing the font on up to 12. Yes, please. Okay. Yes. And there we have it. Set up process we do every time. Back to the home page. In prior presentations, we've been focusing in on, we looked at the vendor cycle. We looked at the customer cycle. The vendor cycle also can be called the expenses cycle, the payable cycle. For example, the accounts payable cycle. And then the customer cycle, which can be the sales cycle, the revenue cycle or the accounts receivable cycle, noting that at the end of the day on the customer cycle, we're hoping to have a deposit that goes into the checking account at the end of the day or the end of the process for the vendor cycle, we're typically having a decrease in the checking account. So then we'll get into the employee cycle or the payroll cycle in a future presentation. First, we want to look at the items on the left hand side that QuickBooks thought important enough to add to the home page, but which doesn't directly or don't directly kind of align into one of the major cycles. So when we think about the major cycles, we're thinking about the forms within the cycles, which are used to create the end result, the financial statements, the forms creating the transactions, the debits and credits, the double entry accounting system, which then create the end result, the balance sheet, the income statement and related reports to them and the company section we have some other items many of which are going to be like the groundwork type of items that need to be set up before you can populate the forms in the into in the cycle section so for example in the company era the company section we have the chart of accounts the chart of accounts is going to be very important kind of like the groundwork that needs to be put down before we can populate anything else such as the forms like the bills and the invoices and so on we also often in quickbooks world think about the chart of accounts as a type of list item and that's because it has historically been under the drop down of lists this is another area where QuickBooks kind of takes on its own terminology, which might be separate than say accounting in general, just because of the way the software is set up. So under the lists, one of the main lists, so if you hear a QuickBooks user use the term lists, the chart of accounts is going to be one of the major lists under that category. So if we go into that, then we see our accounts listed on the left hand side, the account types. We have to set up these accounts before we can post any forms to them. Because this is such an important tool within the accounting process, we'll spend more time just diving into this in and of itself in a future presentation. We're just gonna basically point it out here. And then when we create the new company file, we will construct this when we build the new company. Remember that if you're starting, like most bookkeepers are gonna start working for a company file that has already been set up. If you go in and work in the accounting department, therefore the chart of accounts will already have been set up. 
and you will be working with that chart of accounts and try to mirror what has happened in the past so that you have consistency going into the future. If you have a new company file, then the chart of accounts is one of the first things you're going to want to think about and set up. It's kind of like the groundwork. And by doing that, it really helps you to understand the whole system. So we'll talk more about the chart of accounts in future presentations. We've got the items. This is the other one that's usually thought of as a list type of thing in QuickBooks terminology, because once again, you could find them in the lists dropdown and the item lists. So here we have the items we've talked about a little bit. Mainly the items are going to be those things that we see populated when you create like an invoice or a sales receipt. Those are the things that we sell. It will also be used if we buy inventory in like a bill when we record the purchase of the inventory. Also in the items you have sales tax kind of items as well and that kind of stuff. These are the things that need to be set up in order for data input forms like invoices, bills, sales receipts to populate as easy as possible. Another thing that we don't really do on a day by day basis, it's the groundwork that needs to be put into place so that the day to day activity, the financial statements run smoothly. We'll talk more about them again in detail in and of themselves in a future presentation. And we'll put together the items in a similar fashion as with the with the chart of accounts in that the items are something that if you if you go into an existing business are already set up for you. But if you start the business from scratch, you're going to have to set up your own items. And that's a great practice to do because then you get a better understanding of what the items are and how they're facilitating the data input transactions and the financial statements uh, as the end product. So then we talked a little bit about the inventory uh, activity item here because this kind of feeds into the vendor area. So if you have inventory, then you might need to do periodic adjustments to the inventory, comparing the physical count of the inventory to what is in your books and possibly having an adjustment to the inventory. So this is something that isn't part of the normal cycle. It's not really connected to the normal cycle, but it is kind of part of your normal process because you might do that physical count periodically possibly uh, every month or something like that. You've got the ordering of the checks. Now this is something that you can think, well, maybe you can think of it kind of like an advertising thing for the QuickBooks, because if you print physical checks, you're going to have to actually get the physical checks. You can't just print checks on paper. You have to have the physical checks that then are populated with the added information in QuickBooks and you'd have to order uh, checks if you're going to use that through QuickBooks. You've got the turn on time tracking. So you can kind of enter time down below. We'll talk about entering time uh, basically down below. When you enter time, you can use that most obviously to kind of kind of create the payroll if you have payroll that you need to be generating. But you can also enter the time to help you to basically uh, create invoices. It could be a, a billing kind of system in like, like a job cost system. So you can enter the time and use that to create an invoice. And then you got different like integrations if you turn time tracking on to make that kind of system easier. So if you have a system in which you're billing clients, for example, for time related items and you want to track the time, possibly having employees where you want to track the time and you want to make that a, more of an automated thing, then you might look more into the time tracking options. So here it says, Unlock the power of time tracking, track hours anytime, anywhere, manage time on the go from your phone, tablet, or desktop, stay connected to your team, see where workers are and get updates on their projects, integrate with payroll as well. So there is that option. I'm going to say, are you about, I'm going to say, okay, we've got our calendar and that can help us to kind of schedule the transactions. We could set up like memorized transactions and that kind of things that happen periodically. And the calendar can help us for the, for the, you know, just to organize the big events and so forth. I'm going to maximize the screen back out again. And then we've got in the banking section, we saw the deposits. Now we, we of course talked about the deposits before when we looked at the customer cycle and you can see, even though it's in the banking section, it's kind of connected to the customer's cycle because we would hope that most deposits are ultimately coming from the customer for goods and services that we provided in our business. But we might have other deposits that we have that we're putting money into the business as the owner, for example, or a loan are two common examples of other kinds of deposits. So therefore the deposit is kind of in the banking area 
and but still crosses over to the customer area. We've got a reconcile option. The reconciliation, normally we think of reconciling the bank account. So with a bank account, you enter the transactions into the system. And usually then we want to reconcile our account to the, to the bank transactions. So notice there's two ways this could happen. If you're completely dependent on the bank feeds, which we'll do, we'll talk about in a future presentation, meaning you're waiting till everything clears the bank, possibly in like a gig work kind of business or something like that. Then you're using those bank feeds to create your transactions, your forms to create your financial statements. Then you're really dependent on the bank to enter the transactions and you still want to reconcile but you're just really trying to, to determine that you've got all the information in from the bank. You didn't duplicate anything or you didn't miss anything. In a full service bookkeeping system, we enter the data first, invoices, receive payments, deposits into our system. And then when we get the bank statement at the end of the month, we wanna compare everything that has cleared the checking account to our books. And that would be a traditional reconciliation, which would give you more internal control because now you have you doing the books, the bank doing the books, a comparison between the two will help you to reconcile, giving you more internal control, given the fact that cash is the lifeblood of the company. So if we can reconcile the cash account, it's not perfect, doesn't mean no errors have happened, but it, it, it's a huge internal control. So we wanna do that. So obviously, that's something that happens periodically, but usually I would get in there by going to the banking dropdown and then uh, reconcile here. It's how I would usually go there because it's not part of the daily transactions as with the flows here, something that happens periodically, typically on a monthly basis. We've got the check over here, which you would think they would have over here in the vendor section somewhere because most of the time the check form, as we saw in the past, is a decrease to the checking account. It always is a decrease to a cash account of some kind. And uh, so you would think that normally you would be paying vendors for goods and services that you are buying with a check. But I believe they put it here as we saw in the past because you might be having a check to yourself, for example, for a draw or something like that. So they put it in the banking section. And then we've got the register. Now the register is a kind of a simple way to usually, when we think about the check register, we're thinking about the register for cash. That's an easier data input kind of idea. And so that's why it's a really useful tool. So in other words, anytime we see that there's an increase to the, to the cash account, if it's not an increase from the cash account that's coming from the receive payment or the create sales receipt, then we might not use the form, we might go directly into a register because it's easier to do the data input. Or if anytime there's a decrease to the checking account, like an electronic transfer or we're writing a check that isn't a special kind of check, like a pay, like a pay bill check or, a, or a, a, a sales tax check or a liability check or something like that, then it might be easier to go to the register. So this is just another tool to do the data input a little bit easier for cash related items, increases and decreases to the checking account. Most of the time I'll go into there by going to the banking dropdown, use register this way. And usually we're talking the check register, which would be here and going into the check register. And it looks like kind of a check register for the old checkbooks if you were entering that way. And, and you can enter checks. So we've talked about that a little bit in the past. The other way you can get in there is by going to the chart of accounts, the chart of accounts, and then you can, you've got your checking account. If I double click the checking account, it takes you into a register. You also have a similar register layout for, for most other balance sheet accounts. So we'll actually use the register for other balance sheet accounts as well. And that is QuickBooks way of trying to see things in terms of increases and decreases, trying to reduce the amount of use of debits and credits which could be easier in some cases, but actually more confusing in others because debits and credits is actually a more efficient way of thinking about things, but it could be useful in some areas. So we'll use them in the future. We'll point that out as we enter transactions. We've got the printing of the checks. So if you're actually physically printing the checks in the system, you have to buy a separate check. You can enter the, the checks into the system and then you, you're going to say you're going to print the checks later and then if the checks are tagged to be printed, then you can go ahead and print the checks. It says review checks and or paychecks. 
that have been recorded in QuickBooks and select the checks you want to print. And then of course, you'll basically select the checks and print them out. And you want to line up the checks numbers in the system to the check numbers that are physically on the checks. And that's going to give you kind of an internal control for the checks that are being written. And then we have the enter credit card charges. This is similar to entering the checks up top, but now we're, we have transactions with a credit card. Now with a credit card, most of the transactions are going to be electronic. So a lot of small businesses, if they have credit card transactions, we go into it, it looks a lot like a, a check transaction. A lot of times people will be reliant on pay, possibly bank feeds for the credit card charges because they're going to be all electronic oftentimes. And so you can connect the credit cards to the bank in a similar way as you can for the for the checking accounts. But similar kind of process, except that instead of instead of decreasing a checking account, it's going to be increasing the liability for the credit card. Every time you enter a transaction, the other side go into an expense or purchasing an item like an inventory. And then that and then you're going to have to pay off the credit card uh, periodically of course and that and that's another process that you can also use a reconciliation process for as you look at the monthly credit card statements and try to reconcile the data that you've put in versus the credit card company and remember it's, it would on a full service credit card thing it would be uh, a, a system where a full service accounting system would mean that you're entering the charges as they happen right and then you would be comparing them to the credit card company periodically with the statements but again small companies because they're electronic and the credit card charge is clear quite quickly they're, they're oftentimes going to be waiting until something clears the bank and use that transaction to record into the into the system possibly with the use of the bank feeds so there's the company and banking information you also have like some shortcut information on the left hand side now we might go into some of the customization of some of these items a little bit more in the future, but just to point them out over here, uh, just because these are, I just wanna point them out because QuickBooks has solved them important enough to put them in the shortcut item. So if I go on the right-hand side, we've got the open windows open and I've got this little tab closed down below. I'm gonna expand it to open it back up so that we can see the shortcuts. So now we've got my shortcuts, we've got the, the view, uh, balance we've got run favorite reports and open windows options here we've got the open windows currently the one that we're using we also have the favorites up top this is another area that that can be customized we might talk about that in the future but now i just want to look at the items that quickbooks has populated into these shortcuts because it might give us an idea of what they think are important right so we've got first we've got the home page so that's going to be the home page another shortcut to get there of course you can get there as well by going to the drop down you've got the my company information so that will take you to the company information which can be useful because you know now, now you're going to get you know the quickbooks data that's in the system for your company information closing that back out you can also go up top and look at the my company information this way which i i would think is normally the way i would think of doing it generally and then we've got the cash flow hub so if you go into the cash flow hub we'd have to log into it here so we might go into that when we go into our practice problem in a future time but it'll give us some more detail on a cash flow basis and then we've got and some of this stuff of course also if into it is putting it if quickbooks is putting it in this area it could also be because this is a, a something that they're trying to promote as a tool that they want to promote or it also could be sometimes they put stuff like payroll, which would be an add on type of thing. So they're trying to say, hey, do you want to add on this particular thing, which would be like a sales type of thing. So then we have the income tracker. We, we looked at a little bit in the customer area. So the customer area, we go up top and the customer center. We saw that we have the income tracker here as well. So I'm going to close this back out. And this could be another way other than the customer center to kind of sort your items. One of the major items you might be looking at are the estimates, for example, to try, if you're using estimates and then the open invoices to try to sort. It's another way to kind of sort uh, your invoices. So I'm going to close that back out. That could be a useful tool depending on uh, your particular needs and what you prefer. So I was an in, you got the same on the bill tracker. So we saw this in a prior presentation under the vendors center. 
You can get to the bill tracker uh, here as well. That's how I would normally think about getting there. But you might want that in your short cups. Normally there, you would be looking at the open bills, you would think, and then sorting out your bills. It's another way that you can use to sort and you can use to filter. So we've got the bill tracker. You've got your calendar we looked at. We've got the snapshot. So this could give you, this is trying to give you some some general information in one window. It looks really neat and nice. Uh, so some of it might be useful, but obviously most of, the, most of the stuff I would be looking at from an accountant standpoint would be, you know, the reports. Uh, but you've got that information. You've got the customers on here that takes you to the customer center. Useful, but I would think that normally you would just go to the customers and the customer center up top. So that doesn't seem faster to me to put it in a shortcut. On the vendor center, same same thing. I think it's pretty easy to go to vendors and vendor center. So that doesn't seem to help me a lot. The employees, same thing, because you would think that you would go to that by simply going to the employees and it's the first item up top. So I wouldn't think that would be uh, a lot helpful. You've got the document information. So if you wanted to uh, download and upload documents, that could be a useful tool. It might be used for a shortcut if you use that a lot. You've got the reports. That doesn't seem a whole lot more useful to me because again, you got the reports and the report center is right there. We'll dive into reports later. You also have the shortcuts to the reports up top. So that doesn't seem like a, like a whole lot more useful to put in, in there. You've got the order of the checks. Now that seems more like an advertising thing from Intuit to me because now they're selling checks that you're gonna be needing to use to enter in the system. Uh, user licensings. So this isn't something that you would you would need to be updating all the time. But again, QuickBooks might be putting it in there almost for personal uses in the event that you need more users, right? They're trying to remind you, you could buy more users over here. An invoice. So we've seen many different ways you can get into an invoice, including the customer dropdown, the homepage and so on. So it does. So it, it's a form that you would use a lot, but it doesn't seem to add a lot of value to add that over there, although valuable form. The items list, we saw that in the lists dropdown item list. That's how I would think of to go there. So it might be useful to add that over here, but I wouldn't think it too useful. A check form, which you could find under the, the banking section and write a check. So I'm not sure it would save a lot of time to put that in your preferences. Also note, if you put all this stuff in the preferences, you might kind of forget how to find it outside of the preferences, which makes it difficult to communicate with people. A bill form, vendors, uh, uh, and then we've got the intra bill. So that's how I would normally go there. Uh, registers, opening up a, a register, which you can go to banking and use register. Generally, if we saw a different couple ways to get there, you can also go to the chart of accounts and then click on a register. Here's the chart of accounts, which again lists chart of accounts. That's how I would normally go there. You could double click on an account to get to the a register of that account. The reminders that if you're using reminders could be something uh, if you want, if you have reminders for transactions into the future, that might be useful because it's not something that you use on a day to day basis that you have on on a on a on a shortcut. Uh, the find item. So it could be could be useful to have a find item there in the shortcut you've got the feedback so not going to put this prop you know probably not the most important thing the services item here so quickbooks products and services so this is kind of more of an advertisement for quickbooks because you've got the items that are like add-on features for quickbooks here and then you've got add payroll again kind of like an advertisement for from quickbooks because payroll is an add-on feature and the credit card same similar kind of process uh, so those could be useful features but they're in the shortcuts i think because quickbooks is trying to say hey we got these other things that you can add on so we might talk about how to customize these shortcuts and and then go through some preferences that i might think are preferences for the shortcutting some advice with that in future presentations but these are the things that quickbooks thinks are important enough to either put on the home page or in the shortcuts area.